um, here you see that I have the reaction written at the top. Um, we got ethanol plus acetic acid is in equilibrium with ethyl acetate and water. So the purpose of the lab really is to prove that the equilibrium constant is constant as long as the temperature is constant, uh, irregardless of what you start with. So I have underneath this reaction that's under study an ice table, initial change equilibrium. And um, what this experiment shows is that no matter what your initial values are for the reactants um, and the, um, the products, here I have a T representing the initial value of ethanol, C representing the initial value of acetic acid, H for ethyl acetate, and then for water I have a sum of two different sources of water because we have to also remember that in this reaction there's a catalyst and that catalyst um, is oh about three molar which makes it mostly water you know 25 molar water uh, so <clears throat> we're going to have to calculate the amount of water that's in the catalyst and that's always going to be, be in each one of those reaction flasks that we theoretically started with. Um, and that's going to go here in this position for the amount of water in the catalyst. But um, in flask C, flask C, uh, we also have an additional amount of water, which was one milliliter added. Okay. Um, now the equilibrium constant is going to be defined uh, using the law of mass action as usual. So the equilibrium constant K is defined as the equilibrium concentration of the ethyl acetate, which is a product, multiplied by the equilibrium concentration of water, which is a product, divided by the reactants, all to the stoichiometric coefficient of one. Now, since the stoichiometric coefficients are one, we could form this equilibrium constant in units of molarity, which you should always do, but you get the same answer if you just use moles because the volumes cancel out. The volume of, for example, the ethanol down here uh, in 10 milliliters would cancel out with the volume up here of ethyl acetate and same thing here and here. So, um, although you should know that equilibrium constants are formed with using units of molarity for concentration equilibrium, uh, you can get the same answer in this case and, and only this case uh, because of what we just said. Um, all right, so we have initial conditions for the ice tables. We have our change uh, row and then equilibrium row. Now I put x's, uh, negative x's, underneath the uh, products and positive x's underneath the, the reactants because in each one of these mixtures um, we'll see that it has to shift to the left to reach equilibrium. And then you just add those up and you get your equilibrium concentration. So this is pretty much the setup of the ice tables. And the theory is no matter what you start with for T, C, H, and W, the, the amount of water, um, when this reaction reaches equilibrium and you calculate the equilibrium concentrations and form the equilibrium constant, you get pretty much the same uh, value for the equilibrium constant within an experimental error. All right, now having said that, down here, um, I have the calculations that you're going to need to perform and hand in for your report. So you read the instructions and you hand in one through five for the report. Uh, number one, uh, you're going to hand in the raw data. Number two, you're going to calculate 
the concentration of HCl and the density of HCl from that initial experimental data. And I don't think I need to talk about that. It's pretty straightforward for calculating uh, the density would be, um, you know, grams per milliliter. Uh, so uh, you can use your experimental data to find the density of HCl and the concentration of HCl from titration of flask A. Uh, you can use your knowledge of titration and mole ratios to calculate that. Um, let's see, three, this is going to uh, talk about how you have to calculate the water that's in that HCl uh, sample because that goes in the ice table underwater, uh, like we mentioned above. And then here's the meat of the, the whole project, the report. You're going to be doing your ice tables, and you only have to do three and hand those in. And then discussion, uh, you're going to uh, look at the average. You're going to compare it as though that it should have been um, uh, the equilibrium constant should have come out to be 6.0, but that's pretty arbitrary. Um, you know, equilibrium constants uh, are temperature dependent, so uh, this doesn't even take that into account, which it should. It's just saying, oh, just go ahead and calculate a percent error, pretending that six was the true answer. But you were grouping of your three, maybe cl uh, close and uh, more accurate, but it's you know, just a completion kind of a thing for your reports. So you, you can do that. So the only thing that really I want to talk about is the formation of the ice tables. And um, take a look at the example that's presented in your lab manual, uh, not your lab manual, but the lab handout um, sheets. All right, well, um, let's take a look at this table here of uh, initial volumes for each one of the flasks and and show that those x's um, in the the um, the change column uh, sorry the change row in the ice table uh, are in fact negative under the products and positive under the uh, reactants. Now, flask A is not involved in the reaction. It just has the catalyst in it. And the reason why we need flask A is because we've added that same amount of catalysts in all the flasks. And we know that a catalyst is not consumed. It just helps the reaction get to equilibrium faster. So when we go to calculate um, the total amount of acid at equilibrium, we're going to want to uh, take this HCl into account. And I'll show you in a few minutes why that's important. So uh, this is not applicable. It's not involved in the equilibrium that we're forming, forming the equilibrium constant for. For B, C, and D, they both, uh, sorry, all three shift to the left to reach equilibrium. And the reason why that it shifts to the left is because um, it can't possibly shift to the right. For example, in case B, you don't have any um, reactants. You didn't put in any uh, in this flask. Um, and even though you don't have water that you put in here, you have some from the HCl catalyst. So it's not a zero. Uh, so you can take water and some of the ethyl acetate and shift back to make reactants. And that's the case here. You have water, you added some plus the HCl. And then again here, like um, B, you have water from the HCl. Uh, in flask C, again, you don't have any reactants. In flask D, you don't have one of the reactants. Uh, so therefore, again, you can't possibly shift to the right to reach equilibrium. And all these have to be shifted to the left, which is why I wrote the uh, negative signs here underneath the, the products and positive over here. Okay. Now, how do we do this experiment and um, calculate K? 
well, we're going to need to calculate the equilibrium concentrations. And in my lecture, we call this a type B um, equilibrium uh, problem. And uh, in that type B equilibrium problem, uh, whether it's in lecture or textbook problem, they give you uh, the initial conditions and then they give you the concentration of one of the reactants or products, doesn't matter which, at equilibrium. Once you have that one at equilibrium, you can calculate X. Once you have X in the ice table, you can add them up and find all the equilibrium concentrations and then form K. So that's the general approach for how to solve for the equilibrium constant. Now, how did we do that? Um, how did we do that experimentally or, or what was the experiment that we used to analyze each one of the flasks? So uh, we have to remember that for this experiment to analyze each one of the flasks, what we did was we titrated with sodium hydroxide. Now, sodium hydroxide is a strong base that's going to react with all the acid. So the volume of the NaOH titrated, and that could be for flask B, C, or D, multiplied by the molarity of NaOH and that was standardized from the stock room. And that's going to be around, I think it was 1.054 molar. But you'll have to put it in whatever you had experimentally, uh, whatever was written on the board. So if I multiply these together, that's going to give me the moles of uh, NaOH that was titrated in each flask. Um, B, C, and D, but I have to realize that this equals the moles of total acid in each one of those flasks, total acid. Now, if I want to calculate the moles of acetic acid at equilibrium, and that'll give me the one that I need at equilibrium in order to uh, pretty much unlock the ice table and calculate K, then I can do it because I know that the moles of acetic acid at equilibrium should equal the moles total acid minus the moles of HCl, right? And then once I know that, then I can equate that to C plus X and then solve for um, X and the, and the ice table. So again, um, this total moles of acid is calculated from the titration. The moles of HCl in each one of the flasks uh, is calculated from the titration of flask A, and that was the purpose of flask A. So we can do that, and then we can get the moles of acetic acid. Um, and this is shown, and, I, and I'll show you this calculation down below in the, um, in the lab itself. So that only really leaves us to talk about how to calculate the initials, the initial amount of ethanol, the initial amount of acetic acid, the initial amount of ethyl acetate, and the initial amount of water. Now, most of these initial amounts are going to be zero, so there's not going to be any calculation because you didn't add in any. And we can take a look at which ones uh, will be zero by just looking at what was uh, put into the flasks by the stock room. All right, so flask B, um, that value for, what did we call it up here, T and C, uh, 
they're both going to be zero. Zero for the acetic acid and zero for the ethanol. Um, it's also going to be, um, oh, sorry, for flask B. Here it is, zero and zero. And then we need to calculate the amount of um, acetic or, or ethyl acetate from five milliliters of ethyl acetate and then the amount of water that's in HCl. Uh, all right, now to do that, I'm just going to refer to the notes in the, the lab uh, procedure itself. So here I have that, and I'm looking down um, right after it, in the procedure, it says this is what you have to do for your report. Uh, this is part of four, the ice tables, you're going to be uh, handing in those three ice tables, uploading them. And then down here, it talks about the ice table calculations and how to do them. Uh, and it goes through an example of Flask D. So in Flask D, um, they show that we, we calculated some initial values and, and down below it shows how to get those initial values and then put your ice table together with the equilibrium value uh, that you found for acetic acid. And down below, it shows you how to do the calculations for that. Once you have the equilibrium, you know that X must have been that amount. And then all the X's are the same for each one. It's just that they're negative uh, underneath the products and positive underneath the reactants. Um, all right. So you're going to need to look at the densities and the molar masses for calculating the moles and therefore the concentrations for the initials. So in order to do that, look at this table of useful data for densities of ethanol, ethyl acetate, and acetic acid. They're right in here. Um, and their percent purities and so forth. So here it says the initial moles of HCl in the sample calculation is 0 0.0153 moles. That was calculated um, by you, hopefully, in that first uh, one or uh, I think it was the second or third part of what you're going to hand in. Uh, and that that's from the, the uh, titration of flask A. So we know that that's in each one of the flasks. So how do we calculate the initial um, number of moles of all the other guys? Well, you'd have to take the volume that you added. So say it was that five milliliters of ethyl acetate. You multiply it by the density of ethyl acetate, which is in this um, table up here. Right here's the density of ethyl acetate. It's right there in the table. So you're going to um, take the volume that you use, multiply it by the density percent mass. It's it's 99.99 percent. It's like multiplying by one. Don't have to worry. Um, divided by the molar mass of uh, that substance that you you're trying to find to calculate the amount the amount of. Um, so this is pretty much a general equation for any of those, ethyl acetate, ethanol, acetic acid, even water you can use for the uh, class C, the one milliliter, uh, to calculate its moles. And so they do that for you here. They show you how to do it for uh, ethanol. If you had added one milliliter of ethanol, that's the density of ethanol, that's the purity, that's the molar mass, so that's the moles initial of ethanol for flask D. But it's the same for all of them like that. Um, you multiply how much you used, which in most cases are, is going to be zero. So um, you're going to get zero moles here for those initial values for flasks B, C, and D. Uh, and they do ethyl acetates next. In flask D, you used four milliliters. That's the density. Um, that's the molar mass. And that's the moles of ethyl acetate. And so 
uh, you can organize that in your ice table for uh, D, um, which they have right here. So this is where they're getting those initial moles of ethanol, ethyl acetate, and then the amount from the water is discussed also below. How much water comes from that HCl catalyst? And so um, they're going to talk about that right here in the calculations. So you need to read that and, uh, and see uh, how they calculate the amount of um, moles of water from that uh, HCl. Uh, the, they say, okay, so that's the moles of water from the HCl right there. Uh, then they say, okay, now watch out, flask C, you have that many moles plus uh, moles from one milliliter of water. So we can use that other equation up there uh, that takes the density of water times the volume divides by the molar mass, and again, you get the mole. So this needs to be added to this for flask C only to get the initial uh, volume, uh, sorry, the initial moles of um, water in that flask C. And then it talks about the equilibrium amounts, which I just uh, talked to you about before, uh, the, the way to get the equilibrium amounts is first get the equilibrium amount of acetic acid, which is found by the total amount of acid minus the hydrochloric gives you the acetic. Once you have the acetic acid, you find X. Once you have X, you put that in the ice table and add them up, and then you get the equilibrium concentrations of all the other reactants and products and solve your ice table and form your equilibrium constant K. And um, that's pretty much it. You're, you're going to uh, make up the report just like it says and hand in one through five here. Uh, so after you've, you've formed your Ks, your three Ks, uh, you're going to discuss them in terms of their accuracy and precision. The precision is how well they agree with each other. And uh, in order to quantify that, you can calculate the standard deviation and the percent relative standard deviation. See if you could look that up, uh, you know, how to calculate those and what they mean and use that in your discussion to explain the precision of your results. That's going to talk to precision, how close they are to each other. Uh, and then for the accuracy, we're just going to pretend that the value was supposed to be 6.0, even though it wasn't as temperature dependent and, and stuff like that. So uh, you can just do a percent error calculation. It's, it's kind of meaningless if you ask me. Um, but anyway, that's what it asks for. And that's what you're going to hand in for your report, these five things. So I hope that that.